Fox 5 and Hot 97 present Street Soldiers with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on Dangerous New Drugs. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We're seeing a rise in overdose deaths and the growing presence of fentanyl and deadly drug combinations. We're also seeing shocking headlines about new street drugs like Trank, an animal tranquilizer that can cause instant death. We took it to experts on the front lines to find out what's really going on. The latest data on drug overdose deaths in New York City shows they're at unprecedented high levels, increasing in 2021 by 78 percent from 2019. The city health department says about 80 percent were due to fentanyl, a synthetic opioid about 50 to 100 times more potent than heroin. Fentanyl-laced heroin was found to be the cause of the accidental overdose death of beloved film and TV actor Michael K. Williams. It's a national crisis that should be a priority, says DEA special agent in charge, Frank Tarantino. This is the greatest threat we've ever faced in drug law enforcement. 108, nearly 108,000 overdose deaths in 12 month period. Uh, you know, 295 people dying every day, Lisa, is the equivalent of a 737 crashing every single day in the United States. Another disturbing trend is the combining of drugs the L.A. County Medical Examiner determined that Grammy-winning rapper Coolio, known for his hit song Gangsta's Paradise, died from an accidental overdose of fentanyl, heroin, and methamphetamine. Dr. Indra Sadambi sees this often in her addiction treatment practice. Fentanyl is part of anything and everything. Dr. Sadambi says many times patients seeking treatment will tell her they're using one drug when it's actually a potentially lethal combination. People are taking substances without even knowing what they are taking. That's very sad to start with. And then for a treatment provider like me, I have to like immediately change gears. The new on the drug scene is xylazine, called Trank or the zombie drug. It's a powerful animal tranquilizer, often combined with heroin and fentanyl. Too much can stop a person from breathing. Since it's not an opioid, naloxone and Narcan have no effect. At the on-point overdose prevention centers, Users can consume their drugs under supervision with medical staff ready to jump in if necessary. We are working with folks who are using already. If we don't create a space for those folks to use safely, the, the deaths in New York and the deaths in this country are only going to rise. Let's find out more from our panel. Joining me is Dr. Indra Sadambi. She's the medical director of the Center for Network Therapy. She is a board certified psychiatrist and also a double board certified addiction specialist. Dr. Stambi, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Lisa. We appreciate it. Also with us is Frank Tarantino. He's a special agent in charge of the DEA New York Division, that's New York City and New York State, the Drug Enforcement Administration. Frank, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. It's great to join you today. Thank you. Also joining us is Sam Rivera. He's the direct, uh, executive director of On Point NYC. It is the nation's first safe consumption center. He's been involved uh, throughout a, a big part of his life in harm reduction and trying to save lives. Um, Sam, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here along with the other panelists as well. Thank you. All right, great. So, uh, Dr. Sadambi, I want to I want to talk with you about this because you have a unique approach to to treating people with substance abuse issues. But tell us, just in the last year or two what people have been coming to your center and coming to you for help with? I've been seeing since the COVID has uh, hit us very badly here, I've been seeing a lot of alcohol issues. Like, you know, people don't even think they have an alcohol problem and they come in and say, hey, I'm not able to stop drinking. I have to go back to work and this has been impacting. Um, that has been seen more and more. And along with that, of course, the unfor you know, the forgotten baby, the opiate epidemic now has become like out of control. And people have been using all those dangerous substances that's been uh, adulterated with the heroin, fentanyl, and stuff like that. So it's such a challenge as a physician because we treat them the way we used to, but then they we don't see any uh, relief uh, from the anxiety or agitation. And then we go around thinking like, you know, what's going on here? Are we missing something? And they don't even have a mental health issues underlying. It's, you know, plain old substance use disorder, but when I understood what has been mixed with those substances, that's been a huge challenge, and uh, that's what I'm facing right now. No, I want to I want to talk about that. Frank Diotino, the DEA has spoken out on for, for years, and we've been doing interviews with your members and your leadership for for years about this. 
about the fentanyl, the threat of fentanyl going back to like 2017, we started talking about it. What And you, you've also taken a position in terms of trying to educate people throughout the opioid epidemic. But what about the, what is happening in terms of the drugs that you see are being trafficked on the streets? So Lisa, the, the greatest drug threat that the United States has ever faced is fentanyl. Fentanyl is killing Amer Americans at record rates. 107,735 Americans lost their lives to drug overdoses and poisonings last year alone. And fentanyl is the primary driver of these overdose deaths. And we're seizing fentanyl at uh, record rates throughout the United States. Uh, the DEA seized 57 million pills last year, 13,000 pounds of fentanyl across the country. That's 410 million lethal doses taken off our city streets. Here in the New York division, we seized over 2 million fentanyl pills and approximately 2,000 pounds of fentanyl. That's about 72 million lethal doses taken off the streets of New York. And we're seeing this play out across our country, and it's a devastating, catastrophic event that is uh, changing people's lives every day. 295 people die every single day in the United States from overdoses and poisonings. Oh my gosh. Sam, in terms of the in terms of the opioid epidemic, there were there were people in our urban communities that were saying, "Well, you know what? The, the pill thing is not happening here. Uh, we don't have to." But the fentanyl issue, you know, fentanyl is showing up in heroin it was a, a big problem. What do you what do you see happening now? Yeah, um, so we're, you know, it's not showing up in the same way, but it's obviously showing up. And it's interesting when you reference the uh, heroin because we're testing the drugs. We're testing street drugs right now. There's no heroin, literally zero heroin. Uh, fentanyl's leading, and then we're having other, and I'll be happy to share some of that information with you. You know, I could send some stuff to you, but we're not seeing heroin at all. In fact, we don't use fentanyl test strips. We haven't even used them since 2018. Um, for us and our our participants, um, a fentanyl test strip is always going to be positive. Uh, we have to look at different people in different ways, right? Black and brown folks who use versus uh, uh, middle-aged white folks who use in certain areas is very, very different. When you talk about pills, that's a very, very that's another completely, as I'm sure uh, 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 our friend from the DEA knows, it's very different. Young folks using pills in another in another setting in college and things like that. But for us specifically, we are looking at uh, an uh, adulterated supply that is taking out people that has been mentioned in a way. That's fairly, that's very shocking. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Dr. Sadambi, we've seen recent deaths. Well, in the last couple of years, the death of uh, Coolio was ruled by the L.A. Met County Medical Examiner. It was a combination of drugs, but fentanyl was in the mix. Same thing with a great actor from the HBO's The Wire series, Michael K. Williams. Fentanyl was a component of that. How often are you seeing these combinations of, of these drugs you know, people having issues using combinations of drugs. So what I see in my practice is like people who come in and they say, hey, I have to go through uh, detoxification from you because I'm experiencing these withdrawal symptoms. And when you do a drug test, uh, what comes out, we come back to them and we say, hey, you have been saying that you're using benzodiazepines, but all I see is fentanyl in here. And that comes as a surprise to them. They say, you know, they start like swearing on everything, like, and they say, I'd never use this. So we do understand that people are taking substances without even knowing what they are taking. That's very sad to start with. And then and for a treatment provider like me, I have to like immediately change gears and see how am I going to help this patient? Because now I have benzodiazepine on board along with, um, you know, the opiates in there, which is a you know, a very tricky situation. So which one do you want to detox first? You know, so a quick decision. It's not just the book knowledge. You have to be like up and about with them. And that is a huge challenge for us. Frank, they, they, we're, we're told uh, fentanyl is, is about 50 times more powerful from heroin. But let me let me bring in Frank in here in, in terms of what he's seeing on the streets. With the fentanyl, the the we were told like initially when it, it first exploded in New York was Basically, that a couple of grains could could kill you, if it was if it was one hundred percent pure. But are you seeing these come? Like, can you ever be sure of what's in a drug that you're buying on the street, Frank? So, Lisa, let me just say this: um, two milligrams of fentanyl is lethal. So, what that equates to for the 
average person is if they were to take a salt shaker and pour between 10 and 20 grains of salt into their hand, that's two gram, two milligrams, which is lethal. So the amount of lethality that these pills now contain can range from anywhere to two milligrams up to eight milligrams. So we're seeing an increase in lethality in these pills that we're seizing across the country. But I want to be absolutely crystal clear on this. To understand this problem, we have to know its origin. So Mexico and China are an existential threat to the United States, and China is responsible fl for flooding the precursor chemicals into Mexico and into the United States that is responsible for the synthesizing of these fentanyl pills and powder that's ending up on our city streets. So in Mexico, the two most dominant cartels, the Sinaloa and CJG cartels, are the ones that are mass producing fentanyl pills by the hundreds of thousands of millions and the fentanyl powder that's ending up right here in New York City. And, and that powder is being mixed into cocaine and heroin and methamphetamine and all sorts of other types of drugs. And, and that combination is what is causing the uh, significant spike in overdoses and poisonings and deaths that, that we're experiencing. Sam, what, what about that in terms of, in terms of the fentanyl and, and what you're seeing? Because you have people coming to you in some cases, you know, barely alive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things for me. I, I first, you know, I, I think about how uh, the, the one-way testing and seeing the high rates of fentanyl. Um, you know, we're heading to a place, specifically in New York and beyond, I'm sure, where uh, people are going to have to almost use an OPC to stay alive. We have a, we're two situations. Wait, wait, what is a, when, you, when you see OPC, what does that mean? Safe consumption sites, you mentioned. You know, we have right. we have overdose prevention centers. Oh, okay, okay. A couple of different names for the same thing. Okay. Um, we had we had someone just a while ago. We're not open 24 hours a day yet, which is very 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 sad for us because we have folks with diamond were not open. So we had it. We had someone who was in a in, in a community with a friend using, and they had Narcan with them. The person used fell back against uh, a, a bodega's uh, uh, ice machine. Friend looked over, said, "Okay, I guess he's hot high." Kept using. Our outreach and public safety team arrives there in the morning, and starts treating this guy because he's not moving. Get them down. Starts start. We start with Narcan. Start trying to respond to the overdose. EMS arrives and tells us this guy's been dead for, for, for hours. The fentanyl, the amount of fentanyl he took was so strong, when he fell back, he, he died standing up. Sam, in terms of the, it, is it safe to say that pretty much everything that people are, are coming to you with has fentanyl in it? Yes, everything but marijuana. Um, and then outside, people don't use marijuana. Um, but we've been hearing these things, uh, and I want to make that clear first. Um, and, and maybe, I don't know if Frank, I'm hoping Frank says no, but we haven't seen it in marijuana at all. So I want to be clear about that because too many people, they're using it as a scare tactic, thinking it's a, it's a gateway drug, et cetera. But yes, yes. Not only are we seeing it, we're seeing it at dangerously high levels. Um, and, and too many people are in my, in, in our work, we're seeing beyond our work, excluding themselves from it. As, as the doctor was mentioning earlier. You know, they don't think, some people don't know they're using it. Some people want to deny they're using it. Um, and for us, we want people to believe they're using it so that they're ready and prepared. Frank, in terms of some of the drugs we've been hearing about, this this trank, the animal, the animal tranquilizer, I don't know what the proper name is, is for it. Are you seeing more of that? Because supposedly that can't be, there's no, you can't use a, a Narcan against that. Yes. Yeah, so what we're seeing is xylazine has become more prominent uh, throughout the United States. We're seeing it. We actually seized it in 48 out of the 50 states, uh, South Dakota and Wyoming exempt at this point. But but we're seizing it at uh, increased levels across the United States. Here in New York, we're seizing it uh, more often. So the, the national statistic is that 23 percent of our, all the powder that we're seizing uh, fentanyl power that we're seizing has xylazine mixed in it. And that's what was called, excuse me, and just so everyone is on board with what, or is, can hear, understand what you're saying. So xylazine is what's, what's also called in slang trank, right? Right. The street name for, for xylazine is trank. And xylazine, what xylazine is, is, is a non-opioid sedative analgesic that is a, um, uh, used by veterinaries in, in, in veterinary clinics across the country. 
um, for obviously for animals and not for human consumption. This is something that the cartels are utilizing to increase their profit margins. It's also a distribution level, uh, street level distribution uh, choice by the drug trafficker to mix in xylazine and cocaine and meth and, and then also in fentanyl. So here in New York, what we're seeing is uh, roughly since January of 2023, 15% uh, of all of our drug exhibits now have xylazine in it. Of those 15%, 84% of those exhibits contain uh, fentanyl and xylazine. So we're seeing a very toxic, poisonous mixture of fentanyl and xylazine. And to your point, xylazine is, is a non-opioid. So when you use naloxone or Narcan in this case, to bring somebody out of a overdose state from fentanyl that now has xylazine mixed in it, it will not work on xylazine. Oh so, my gosh. So, so yeah. when we talk about the lethality of fentanyl, if fentanyl is the most dangerous illicit drug on the market today, mixing in xylazine makes it even more deadly. Let me ask that, Dr. Sadambi, in terms of what the, like when people say, we say you overdose and you, some people can survive an overdose, thank God, but what, what does it, what does it do to your body? Like, what do you just stop breathing and then everything just shuts down or let, like, let's say you get one of these drugs and it has a fentanyl or it has a xylazine in it. What happens to your body physically? So what happens with xylazine, first and foremost, as Frank uh, was mentioning, it is uh, a tranquilizer. So it is also a pain reliever and it's also a sedative. That's the most important thing. So why do they even add xylazine to the mix? You know, when you have fentanyl and heroin, this right. is the underlying thing. Just to understand, heroin gives you a high, but then when they add fentanyl to that, the high is, you know, predominant and they love it, but it doesn't last longer. So they want that high to prolong a little longer. So that's why xylazine is being added. Sam, in terms of the lives that you've you've saved at, at On Point with your staff and with your with your medical team, do you see people that go like once they've gone through that they're like never again like have you seen people actually seek treatment beyond that and then you know deal, deal with this illness of substance abuse yes um a, a number of people uh who have come through our program especially when we start to talk to them when i ask a person why do you use they, they use very negative terms i'm lazy i'm a junkie i'm the loser in the family i'm this we talk to them about why. Let's 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 get into why. We have a mental health component to our program. Let's talk about why. What's at the core of your use? See, you asked a very important question before. How do we impact this? We have to go way back, Lisa. We have to go back to allowing a safe space for our children in schools and in other places to be able to come to school or come to a center or anyone and say what's happening at home without criminalizing. Frank, in terms of the, in terms of the messages. There, there's some parents who have lost children to fatal drug overdoses that just say that our, our society as a whole, and not to point fingers, but we're just, there's all kinds of very confusing mixed messages for young people. And especially in certain, they see, they see other people taking drugs and not facing any kind of consequences. They see people selling drugs. Every community has, you know, they know who's the, who's the person in their school that, that has them. And that they see the, you know, we have this huge issue in New York City with with the smoke shop, which some residents say they're selling more than, you know, they're definitely not selling, they're definitely selling more than par paraphernalia. It's where they get their weed, and now they're starting to sell other things, apparently as well, according to what residents are telling us. But are we are we not making clear messages here? So Lisa, I, I would just say that the DEA is extremely laser focused on the education awareness and prevention side of this issue. Um, the DEA issued three separate public safety alerts in the last uh, 18 months. Um, we started with fentanyl and we just sent out another p public safety alert on xylazine. The DEA has initiated a public awareness campaign with One Pill Can Kill. You can go on to dea.gov backslash one pill and find all of our material that educates the um, educators around the world, the caregivers, the parents, people in positions of authority can go onto these sites and have honest, genuine conversations with our young people about these dangers that exist, that are lurking uh, behind a cell phone screen. And, and honestly, this is something that it's going to take every single one of us to uh, be all in on to, to make a difference. This is an impact that we can all share in. 
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on the dangerous new drugs. You can share it and watch it again on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace, love, and justice for all.